Before I discuss Velma proper, I need to talk about what this video is not. This video is not from the perspective of someone who thinks that the dreaded they have wokeified Scooby-Doo by changing the races and sexual identities of certain characters. I find it useless to get morally outraged over the, the skin color, sexuality, gender identity, religion, chakra alignment, or toe count of a fictional character on a television show that you do not have to expose yourself to. All I really want is for the show to be good, and let's make no mistake, Velma is not a good show. Now let me be clear, I don't hold Scooby-Doo on some high, unimpeachable pedestal of nostalgia. I even understand from a marketing standpoint why the franchise's titular talking dog wasn't included in this iteration. At the 2022 New York Comic Con, show creator Charlie Grandy even made the point of mentioning that an executive at Warner Brothers had said that they couldn't use Scooby-Doo in the show because, well, he's a kid's character. He then goes on to state that the show's writing staff were even having doubts about putting Scooby-Doo in the show in the first place. The first statement seems perfectly reasonable to me, the second... Absurd. If you didn't intend to use the talking dog, why did you align this with Scooby-Doo in the first place? This all just strikes me as very deeply cynical. Like, the creators had so little confidence in their original vision that Scooby-Doo was hastily brandished atop another personality-devoid, unfunny, adult cartoon that would not have gained any audience whatsoever had the internet not overreacted to this banal piece of alleged entertainment. That's really the point I want to make in this video. Velma sucks shit on its own terms, and I'm here to show you why. One final disclaimer. Only two episodes were out at the time of writing, so plenty is subject to change about the show. However, for now, I see these as the major issues with Velma's writing and presentation. If I had to describe HBO's Velma with one word, it would be rough. I too saw the terrible trailers unleashed upon the world and decided to give the show a look. Now the show's plot is simple. Velma Dinkley is going to recount the events of how the iconic Scooby-Doo mystery hunting team got together. But she's gonna do it her way, bitch. A string of murders have started up at the local Crystal Cove High School, and it's up to Velma to crack the case wide open, all the while keeping an eye out for her missing mother. Now don't get me wrong, the show does a few things right. I like the show's hallucination sequences, which have some real personality to them. There's effort put into this show beyond... What's popular with the kids these days? Oh, I don't know, a uh, uh, rock and martini? Wubba lubba dub dub. Otherwise, most of the show is not terribly engaging. The show's main problem is its impenetrable tone. You can never really tell what any singular scene is going for. I mean, it's obviously trying to be a horror comedy, it's just not scary or funny. I suspect most of this comes from the fact that the major players here have historically been involved with fluffy comedy shows like The Office, not exactly Evil Dead material. To really give you a sense for this, let's look at the first major scene of Episode 1. After an obnoxious but brief monologue from Velma, we cut to Crystal Cove High School, specifically the women's restroom within, and are introduced to Daphne, alone, dressed only in a towel. She is spooked by a sudden sound she hears, only to see a cockroach scurry out from a bag of potato chips. Then another one scurries out and starts humping the first cockroach. Then Daphne says, ugh, this school sucks and walks away. And then, after a boot comes down and squishes the two bugs, there's a big dramatic sting behind it. Like, I think it's supposed to be funny that the bugs got stepped on while they were having sex? Or are we shifting tone? Was that meant to be a serious dramatic sting? Is, is that a joke? We'll address this again in a second, but now let's move on to Daphne taking a shower with a bunch of other, yes other because she's 15 as well, for all intents and purposes, naked 15 year old girls. 
Are we supposed to be lustfully ogling their underaged two-dimensional bodies? I mean, I get it. They are just drawings, but these are supposed to be 15-year-olds. I can't help but just find this, you know, a little weird. Daphne and some of her friends then have this dialogue exchange about how it's so cliché for a television show's pilot episode to feature an excessive amount of sex and violence. The episode then proceeds to feature a fair bit of sex and violence. This writing is just... eye-rolling. You're just smugly pointing out a trope, winking right at the audience and then expecting them to laugh along with you. There's no commentary. You just made a statement demeaning something while also ironically doing the same thing yourself. This is not smart genre savviness. This is just time-wasting and bland. There's a few more tiresome things that happen in this scene, but let me just cut to the chase and talk about the dead body falling out of the locker. So this violent murder happens where a girl has her brain removed and how do the characters react to this occurrence? Everyone screams and Velma comments, she has no brain. This scene establishes Velma as a little awkward and weird, but also shows us that death and violence have legitimate consequences in this show's universe. And that's mostly what I want to focus on. Think back to the cockroaches getting squashed earlier. That also tells us that violence has serious consequences in this universe. Velma is brought down to the police station and interrogated because they suspect she murdered someone. It establishes the consequences of violence in this universe as similar to our own, somewhat gritty and mature. So how does the rest of the show manage to undercut this, I hear you asking? Well, simple. In the same episode, Velma gets a paper trimmer thrown at her, Fred catches it, throws it, and it boomerangs around and graphically cuts someone's leg off. In the second episode, this character then appears again with his leg bandaged up, only for it to be severed off again. Like, I get it, it's supposed to be a reoccurring gag that this guy keeps showing up and keeps getting his leg cut off. Whatever, there's, you know, an absurd, unnecessary level of violence on display here. Speaking of unnecessary violence, later in the first episode, Fred gets both kneecaps shot, but is fine in the very next episode. Also in episode 2, Velma and Daphne crash through a brick wall, fall two stories down, and then are perfectly physically capable in the very next scene. So, unless we are to believe a few months have passed in between episodes, violence must not have any consequence. Like sure, Fred is still going on trial for the murder of that girl, but nothing for like accidentally cutting a guy's leg off? It just strikes me as weirdly inconsistent that we're meant to 100% fully buy the drama of this dead girl falling out of the locker, but disregard the dramatic implications of violence that isn't important to the plot. I should also mention Norville, this show's shaggy analog. His whole thing is that he's a geek who's madly in love with Velma, and well, that's kinda it so far. I think it has something to do with drugs. Which I hate. Oh yeah, he hates drugs. Because, you see, a lazy writer would make Shaggy a stoner, but we didn't. And we're going to point that out, in case you didn't get it. In episode 1, he's used purely as a plot device to transport Velma from location to location. And in episode 2, he has a B-plot where he tries to sell his kidneys to a mob boss to get $500 to pay for something that Velma wants. A B-plot that ends up being resolved with a punchline about how Norville doesn't like drugs, do you get it? This whole B-plot feels really out of left field, and the only way my mind can really rationalize this being part of the same show is if these mob guys are in some way important to the story later, but I have my doubts we're going to get a recreation of the first season of Twin Peaks in HBO Max's Velma. Fred is also a part of these episodes, although he's a little more central to the show's main story, so I don't really have a lot of information to go on. 
but his current gimmick of spoiled rich kid who doesn't even know how to do simple tasks is not exactly all that funny or compelling. And that's just it, really. Velma isn't particularly funny, it doesn't provide any kind of strong, compelling hook to keep me watching, the universe is really inconsistent. All I can say is that I hope Scooby-Doo fans get something better on the horizon so they aren't stuck rewatching Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School for the 7,000th time. Thank you for watching.